Welcome the Young Minds of Class 8th. I am Nancy Bora, your Social Science Digital Mentor. Today, we are going to start with Class 8 Social Science, Unit 1, Natural Resources, Chapter 1, Our Resources. So let's get the ball rolling. Today, we are going to learn about resources, natural resources, human resources, classification of resources, human-made resources, and conservation of resources. First, let's start with geographical terms. First is abiotic resources. Resources derived from the non-living environment such as land, water, and air are known as abiotic resources. Second is biotic resources. Resources derived from living organism or the living environment are known as biotic resources. Third, geothermal energy. Power obtained by using heat from the earth's interior is known as geothermal energy. Fourth, seam. Seam. A thick layer of coal that can be mined to make a huge profit is known as seam. Fifth, geological time. The time of the physical formation and development of the earth is known as geological time. Sixth, conservation. Prevention, prevention of lost, waste, damage or destruction of resources through their care and proper management is known as conservation. Seventh, strip mining. A process in which rock and soil covers are removed to expose and mine the mineral deposits near the surface of the earth is known as strip mining. In the process of evolution and development, humans have discovered a great variety of resources in nature and created many others with the help of different technologies. In this chapter, we will study the major types of resources, how useful and valuable they are in making human lives comfortable, and why is it important to conserve these resources. First, let's talk about resources. First, let's talk about resources. Any object that is useful in making the life of human beings comfortable is a resource. Whatever we eat, use or even see around us is a resource or has been created from some type of resources. A resource is that that must satisfy a need, should be developed and used, should be accessible to humans, should have some value, economic or social and may contribute to an increase in wealth. And lastly, should be cheap that is developing the resource should not cost too much and should suit the requirements of new technology and the level of development. Now, let's talk about classification of resources. In general, resources are categorized into three broad types, natural, human-made and human. Natural resources can be further classified in multiple ways as shown in the table. First. Resources are divided into three categories, natural, human-made and human. In human-made, we have political, economic, etc. Then, natural resources are divided into three subcategories, that is, origin, stage of development and renewability. There are two types of origin, that is, abiotic, which is soil and water, and biotic, that is, wildlife and vegetation. Second, we have stage of development, which also have two types, that is, now, let's talk about natural resources. Naturally occurring materials that support life, such as water, air and sunlight, or resources that satisfy a human want, such as food, raw materials and mineral fuels, are natural resources. Here are some images of natural resources like wood pulp and waterfall. Now, let's talk about classification of natural resources. Natural resources can be further classified on the basis of their origin, stage of development and renewability. These criteria along with the classification of natural resources based on each of this are discussed below. First is origin. Based on their origin or where they are derived from, resources can be divided into, uh, into those obtained from abiotic or non-living environment and biotic or living environment. First is abiotic resources. These resources include land utilized for settlement, soil for cultivation, water for survival, minerals and etc. Then we have biotic resources. These resources include natural vegetation, forests, wildlife, aquatic ecosystem of both fresh water and salt water etc. Now let's connect to geography. A century ago, aluminium was a, mer aluminium was a mere curiosity rather than a resource and uranium was virtually unknown. 
today both of these are important resources scientists know that nuclear fusion wherein the nuclei of the hydrogen atoms are combined is a potentially limitless resource limitless limitless source of energy but it is not yet clear to people how to use it safely now let's talk about stage of development resources can be classified as potential or actual depending on whether they are being developed currently or are available for future development first is potential resources these resources are known to exist and have been located but are not being utilized and developed presently they may be developed and utilized in future tidal solar and geothermal energy resources in most parts of the world are potential resources waiting to be tapped then we have actual resources these resources have been properly surveyed and assessed and are being currently used by humans example would be tons of iron ore and coal that are being extracted from the chota nagpur plateau and used in iron and steel plants the actual use of the resources depends on their accessibility cost of development and utilization technology utilization technology available market condition and other socio economic factors the third one is renewability some sources are renewable by nature or human assisted processes others are non renewable first let's talk about renewable resources solar power wind and tidal energy crops forest fisheries wildlife air and water are example of renewable resources they can be renewed or replenished in a short span of time they are also more easily available and more widely distributed than non than non renewable resources most renewable resources regenerate themselves either through a cyclic flow process that is often a continuous means a biotic resource or a reproductive process like biotic resource some renewable resources become non renewable if they are destroyed by bad management and improper practices in the usa for example some farmlands have lost their have lost their topsoil highlands have been eroded and streams and lakes silted up however if you if used judicially the renewable resources should be able to sustain development for a long time to come then second is non renewable resources these are either non replenishable or may like take millions of years to be renewed mineral ores mineral ores and fossil fuels are example of these it takes for example a few years to use up an entire coal seam but to produce one such seam may require a whole period of geological time or millions of years non renewable resources are also unevenly distributed and can be exploited only if they exist in sufficiently large deposits thus the non renewable resources need to be managed so that we do not experience a scarcity of such resources in the future let's connect to geography uh, forests are va vast repositories of natural resources that human have been using for different purposes since time imm immemorial so let's find out five ways in which forests were used by the stone age period five products of forests we consume uh, as eatables and some products that we use for their medical and nutritional values now let's talk about human made resources proper use of natural resources depend upon present technology and economic condition it is in this regard that human made or cultural resources assume great significance these resources play a vital role in the utilization and development of natural resources the primary include our technical expertise government structures political and economic institution social and cultural setup now let's talk about human resources human resources constitute human beings themselves let's talk about some salient aspects of human resources without human resources no gift of nature can be developed and utilized as a resource human resources are assessed both in terms of quality and quantity not only must there be enough humans to exploit the natural resources there must also have the techniques to utilize them in the best possible manner along with educational expertise a healthy human population base helps in a region's economic and social development now let's talk about conservation of resources modern civilization and life itself depends on natural resources 
So we need to be concerned about whether there will be enough to sustain development, not just for the people now, but also for future generation. Today, with the steady growth of population and the increase in production, the need for conservation of our natural assets is greater than ever. As of now, we are over dependent on non-renewable resources. Have you guys heard about Pathfinder? The Chipko movement or Chipko Andolan was a mass movement against deforestation that started in the early 1970s in the Garhwal Himalayas of Uttarakhand. The participants in the movement practiced the Gandhian methods of satyagraha and non-violent resistance through the act of hugging trees to protect them from being felled. The landmark event in the struggle took place on 26 March 1974 when a group of peasants, when the group of peasant women in Rainy village in the Chandoli Rainy village in the Chamoli district of Uttarakhand successfully resisted the felling of trees. By the 1980s, the movement had throughout India. This led to the formulation of people-sensitive forest policies which put a stop to the open felling of trees. Now, people must look for alternatives to resources that are becoming scarce. For example, aluminium may be used in place of copper for many purposes. While copper is scarce, deposit of bauxite and clay contain more aluminium than people can use. Exploitation of natural resources sometimes has unintended consequences. For example, when coal deposits undergo strip mining, the flow of groundwater may be disturbed, causing wells to dry up. Poor farming methods have ruined much farmland and left it barren. We must avoid disastrous changes in ecosystem even as we try to increase agricultural land use, forestry, fishing and water development. Each one of us must learn to take care of our environment. Fumes from automobiles and smoke from factories poison the air. The air thus pulled kills trees and the air thus polluted kills trees and endanger human health. Government regulation can control this damage to the environment by reducing the emission of poisonous substances and adopting proper waste management techniques. Proper waste management techniques. But each of us must take responsibility for our actions and attitudes as well. Even if natural resources are conserved and developed properly, the earth will be unable to provide enough food if the population keeps increasing in an, at an alarming rate. The growth of the world population must be controlled to allow for a better quality of life and sustainable management of resources. An understanding of resources is vital to their management and eventual utilization. The successful management of resources to maintain and enhance the quality of environment will not only be will not only meet the needs of present generation but also sustain development in the times to come. Let's connect to geography once again. In 1987, the United Nations released the landmark Brundtland Report. It defined sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. The United Nations 2005 World Summit Outcome Document refers to economic development, social development and environmental protection as the interdependent and mutually reinforcing pillars of sustainable development. Now, let's talk about sustainable development. Sustainable development means development that makes place without damaging the environment. It is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Resources should be utilized judicially so that after fulfilling our present requirements, they are also preserved for the future generation. Humans have always used natural resources to satisfy their wants. However, with increasing population and their ever-growing demands, the rate at which natural resources are being used has risen dramatically. All natural resources are not inexhaustible. If the rate of their consumption is faster than that of their regeneration, they are bound to get depleted. That is exactly what has happened in the case of our flora fauna. Widespread deforestation has led to depletion of green cover. Many plant and animal species have become endangered and are on the verge of becoming extinct. Here is an, e here is an image of deforestation and how it has a large number of adverse effects. Misuse or overuse of many valuable, resources, many valuable resources has led to their degradation or deterioration in quality. For example, 
soil, land and water deteriorate in quality and deplete due to pollution. Water, soil, water, soil and air get polluted due to contamination with harmful substances. We must not misuse or pollute our natural resources. If this situation continues, we will soon have a world devoid of any natural resources. The future of the earth, therefore, depends on how judicially we use our natural resources so that the present rate of development is maintained as well as the environment is preserved. There are some, there are some of the cardinal rules that we must follow. First, use all renewable resources in a sustainable manner. Second, minimize the depletion of natural resources. Conserve the varied species of living organism and do not cause any harm to the natural environment. Enable communities to take care for their own environment. Let's connect to geography once again. There are an estimated 40,000 species of spiders and they all eat insects. They are an important part of the food web and provide natural pest control. So students, let's wrap up the class and see what we have learned so far. Resources are the most vital means of satisfying various human needs. Three broad types of resources are natural, human-made and human. We use different criteria to classify natural resources. Due to rapidly growing population and increase in production, the need to conserve our natural assets is greater today than ever in the past. A sound understanding and utilization of our resources, along with stress on improving the quality of environment, can pave the way for sustainable development. Thank you, Surin. That was it for our class. I hope that you have learned something. We'll meet again in the next class.